trigger warnings, suicide, death, car wrecks, and mentions of abuse. Please keep yourself safe. Spoilers also. Hey, how are you? I hope you're well. Today we're going to be doing another mini review, this time of All the Bright Places. This movie is about Violet Markey and Theodore Finch becoming friends, falling in love, and then conflict. Violet's sister died in a car wreck. Finch has, quote, dark moods. He just gets in this mood sometimes and it's hard. This movie was alright. It had quite a few cliches, but it is a teen romance movie made by Netflix. Naturally, there's going to be a few cliches, but you know what? Cliches aren't always a bad thing. One cliche I found to be interesting, I guess, is the fact that Violet said, I don't write anymore because her sister died. I don't write anymore. It sounds awfully familiar to that one movie, Chemical Hearts, you know, the one about the girl who survived a car wreck but her boyfriend died and she was this talented writer but stopped writing after the car wreck, you know that one? Yeah, I have a review out on that too. <laughs> anyway, I can't tell if this is a cliche or just straight up plagiarism. I liked Finch's character. I feel like they did an alright job fleshing him out. I liked that he read all those big books, and you could tell because of his vocabulary, he was very well spoken like I assume a well-read person is. <laughs> I liked the sticky notes too, it made sense with his character. That doesn't sound like much, but I feel like it's better than Violet's character, which is sister died does not write anymore, you know? Finch has some good friends too. He completely disappears for a while and they still stick with him. That's you know, true friendship. Get you a friend that still loves you even after you ghost them by accident for like a month. Finch's dark moods kind of sound like depersonalization to me. Like when he said that he watches himself from above, it sounds very familiar. I was there, but I wasn't there. I, I was watching myself and I, I, I just get a little lost sometimes. I'm not trying to diagnose him with my homeschool psychology degree aka no degree, but that's just what it sounds like to me. I also have experience, so. I also think he was scared of turning into his dad when he asked his sister what his reason was for abusing them and how maybe he could be fixed. It was really sad, honestly. I don't really remember dad that well, and everything I do remember is, is bad. Are there any good memories you have of him? Well, the fact that he would beat the shit out of us kind of negated all the good times. But why was he like that? There has to be a reason, though. Because if there's a reason, then he could get better. Something or someone could make him better, right? I think Finch's character is really interesting. I honestly, I did not expect him to die. I didn't expect him to actually have killed himself. I, I kept expecting him to pop up out of the water or to walk up behind Violet. I really didn't think he was gonna die. I feel like really insensitive saying it like that, but again, it's a movie. It was very, very sad though. And I would like to say that Elle Fanning did a fantastic job here. Like, wow. It's devastating and you can feel it. I think it's really sad that there was no conflict resolution too. Not that all movies have to have happy endings, but... Man, the last time they talked, he just yelled at her to leave, and that's it. That's so sad. The ending is so sad. So for the presentation Violet did at the end, first, I guess I should say, I thought it was nice. Well written, very eloquent. But I feel like, I kind of feel like this wasn't what the geography teacher was looking for. But okay, this is definitely a nitpick because this is a movie. But I feel like he was looking for more like... Hey, look at this shoe tree and this pond. These places are pretty cool. And not about how Finch taught her to move on and how we can find all the bright places in dark times. I'm worried about life. I'm worried about what would happen if I let myself feel again. Then, without really knowing, it changed. I was worried about what would happen if I didn't. I worried about not remembering, not remembering all of the moments. And that's because of Finch. But in learning all of that, I miss seeing something more important, seeing Finch. I miss that he was in pain. I miss that he was teaching me all along how to move on. And listen, I know it's because we needed to hear the presentation because that's what the premise of the movie is, but it also needed a nice little conclusion monologue. I just think it's kind of funny to point out. It's like at the end of 10 Things I Hate About You when Kat and Patrick are crying in class and everybody's just 
staring at them. <laughs> like, that would be so awkward. I don't know, am I being insensitive? I don't know, it's just a movie. Does anyone else think this though, and or am I the only one? Anyway, one last thing I do want to say is that I'm not sure if this falls into the YA sick kid romance genre. I think it could because of Finch's struggles with mental health, but I think they did a pretty good job not romanticizing the mental illness and stuff and not pushing this you'll be cured if you get a girlfriend or boyfriend story like so many of these types of movies do. So props to them for not romanticizing or trivializing mental illnesses. I feel like all the movies I've covered so far have technically been YA sick kid romance genre, or most of them at least. Whoops, I have a lot of critiques about that genre apparently. Okay, anyway, that's all I have to say. I hope you enjoyed listening to me ramble about yet another movie. Tell me what you thought about All the Right Places. Did you like it? I'm not super big on romance, especially when it's made by Netflix, but th this one was good. Thanks for watching. I'll see y'all later.